everybody, it's Candace with Grow Local Season 2. I'm so excited. I'm in my garden today um, and this year we are actually hoping that we're going to be able to visit a few different places as in a couple of the local schools that have their own gardens growing, um, a market garden, maybe a balcony garden and a smaller backyard garden. But for now, you're stuck looking at my face. I have picked up my favorite pineapple sage. I'm so thrilled. I don't know if you guys do this, but it smells just like pineapple. It goes beautifully in beverages, but this thing gets huge. It'll stand this big and be about that wide, and it's the last thing in the garden to bloom. It gets these gorgeous little yellow flowers if the frost doesn't come through first, and the hummingbirds just go crazy for it. So yay! Behind me, I have borage. It's a volunteer. I didn't plant this stuff, but I got two of them coming. This is the end of my broccoli. We tried eating it as fast as we could. I froze a whole bunch and a neighbor was going to come over and enjoy some. She didn't quite make it on time. It's gone to flower. So this year, guess what I'm saving? Seeds, lots and lots of seeds, and it'll be good. You know what though? If you think about it, these flowers taste just a little bit like broccoli, but they're really good sprinkled on vegetables and put them in salads. So it's kind of a win-win still. I have garlic growing back there and I don't know if you guys remember but I let one of them go to seed and I got all the little bulbs off the top and I planted all those in a bucket and I have all these little teeny tiny things they look like little blades of grass growing up but they're in the bucket and they're by the regular garlic so that I don't forget. I also noticed this year that I didn't really plant a whole lot of garlic and I thought what was I thinking? Till I went over to the side bed and went, oh yeah, because I put garlic over in with my flowers and I've got parsley growing in with my flowers and I got oregano and I got kale. <laughs> and so I'm gonna be eating like the bee's knees this year. It's, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be great. But for now, before you guys get your garden looking at anything like this, I guess we should show you how you can get started, okay? Hi, it's Candace from Grow Local and welcome back. We're doing another one of those garden starter packs. If you have pictures up on the weekend and you got the container packs, you should have received two five gallon buckets and some seedlings and some seeds. They will give you the seeds and a brown paper bag and there's no guarantee what you're gonna get, but as a, as a good idea, this package has dill, spinach, four variety lettuce blend, some radishes, and some oh sprouting seeds too. So you've got lots to play with when you're doing this. You'll also get a 50 liter container of soil that you can use for putting in your containers. Now I'm just going to go through and show you how you can pot these things up. Um, but first I'd like to say if you didn't pick up your packages, and you don't have the containers, not to worry. There's lots of things that you can probably find around the house so you can carry on and do it anyway. These, this size container, you can plant a lot of stuff in here, a whole variety of things, and it will be absolutely wonderful and easy to manipulate, and it'll just do well. However, if you don't have those kinds of containers, this is what the kids planted up. They took a green garbage bag, they poked holes in the bottom, they put six inches of soil and they put their seed potatoes in. And this is how much it's grown in the last couple of weeks. When they get to this size, about a foot tall, we're gonna take soil and we're gonna pop it into the bag, roll up the edges and pop it into the bag so that it comes right up to there with soil. And that's all you need sticking out. And it'll grow some more. When your bag gets probably half full, then you can just let it carry on and grow. You'll get some flowers. About 10 days after the flowers show up, you can stick your fingers in the tops of the bags and you'll probably find some little marble-sized potatoes. The kids will get excited and you're off to the races. There are also buckets like this. Sometimes the floral shops will give them away. You just have to make sure that you put holes in the bottom. Or you can hit the dollar store and get waste paper baskets. You might have ice cream tubs. You might have the infamous 
general store buckets that you get. Oh, what do you get in them? Uh, you get them empty. That's all I do. I go buy the empty bucket and put a lid on it. You can use your flower baskets. This is just a window box and it has a Swiss chard, a pansy, parsley, some lobelia, and this is one of those little mouse melons or cucamelons that can grow to be like 10 feet tall. So it's kind of fun. And here you have it, edible and ornamental. Now we'll go back to planting. Big bucket, big bag of soil. I filled the other one up already. I didn't really think you needed to watch me do that. You'll firm the soil in a little bit. You don't want to make it like a brick. Don't go pushing down so hard that the new roots aren't going to be able to get in there. And I did cheat a little bit. I took it out of one bag and out of the other bag. You will also want to make sure that your soil is probably, it, it never goes more than half an inch to an inch from the top. And the reason for that is when you go to water it, you want the water to be able to puddle in here and stay in here and soak through, not run off the top and all over the patio or the balcony and down onto your neighbors. So in this one, this is where we would plant some of the seeds. And one of your seedlings that you might get is a Swiss chard. And this is a rainbow, and it gets fairly deep roots, fairly thick, and he gets to be quite a large plant. He can grow up to about that size, okay? So you want to give him room. He may never get to that size if you keep coming and cutting off the leaves like you're supposed to do and enjoying it. It just keeps growing new ones. You might get some onions. And if you're wondering why mine are like this and not in pots, we didn't actually have access to the seedlings yet. We haven't picked them up. So I'm pulling stuff out of my garden and just showing you, just so you have an idea. So there, I've tucked in some onions and I've got some Swiss chard. I'm gonna put in my favorite. You guys know that from last year, if you were here, there's my nasturtium. Cause the leaves taste lovely and peppery. They're really good in salads. And then what do I want? I think I'm gonna pop in some radishes. These ones are really good if you're starting to do this with kids because they grow really fast. It's only like a month and they're ready to eat. The seeds are large enough for small fingers to handle. And if you were to throw some carrots in here with the radishes, when the radishes are done, you pop it out and now it's got, it's left a hole and a space for your carrots to fill in. So I've got just some radishes here and you've got options, you guys. You can make little rows if you want or you can just scatter them. And that's all I'm gonna do is just scatter them. They'll come up when they're ready and you can pull them when they're ready. So that would be bucket number one. It doesn't look like a whole lot right now, but it is gonna grow. Your onions are gonna get bigger. If you've got the, the green ones, you can just snip some of the tops. You might have chives. You can snip those all year. I do have chives growing in the corner over here and they're just starting to bud. And those flowers, you can use those in your salads too. But please remember to leave a few of them on the plant because they are really good. They attract the beneficial insects that you wanna have in your garden for pollinating and eating the bad bugs that are going after your stuff. In the second bucket, this is usually the one that you're going to plant your tomato in. And I'm not sure what size the seedlings are that you're going to get, but I've got two sizes here. I'm going to plant this one. Again, a lot of times you wouldn't plant it quite this early. It depends on what the weather's going to be like. Most people don't plant their tomatoes until the very end of May. Uh, if it gets crummy weather, then they just stay stunted and the ones you plant later boot up and they end up all the same size anyway. So just play it by ear. If you've got two tomatoes, do one in one pot, do one in another pot. Check the times and see what works for you. 
Now, when you take these out, I'll tell kids to do an L for love because plants love to be protected in this web. This is where you would put the stem of the plant. So they will put their hand on top of the pot so that the stem's right in there. Then they just use their hand as a plate. They tip it over, squeeze the pot to loosen the soil, and when they pull the pot off, they have the root ball in their hand. They haven't broken any stems, they haven't pulled any leaves off. One of the things about tomatoes is they have little hairs growing all up the sides. And the deeper you plant the tomato, the more roots you're gonna have coming off and the sturdier it will be in the pot. So I'm gonna actually plant it up to here. I'm just gonna pinch these guys off. Make my hole. And there, he's tucked in. And what I absolutely love with my tomatoes is basil. And again, you can get different kinds of basil. This one is from, well, this one's from Grow Local, West Coast Seeds. And you'll see that the seeds are really tiny. They're just little black ones. And for little kids, it might be hard for them to get a hold of them or even see where they went. So again, I'm just gonna sprinkle them. There is another company and you can get these coated and it's like a clay mixture that they put on it so that it's easier to see. And they look like that. And remember, each one of these little seeds is gonna turn into a plant. So you'll probably wanna space them. I'm gonna have lots of basil in this pot. But they also love growing around tomatoes. When these tomatoes start growing up, once they start getting flowers, you can pinch off the leaves and stems that are below it, which gives more room. And then when that midday sun hits, the leaves actually provide a little bit of shade for your basil. They grow really, really, really well together. And that's pretty well it. Easy peasy. So look for the kinds of seeds that you think your kids are gonna be able to handle or which are even easier for you. There is just a myriad of things that you can grow in pots. And like I said, we will put on the Grow Local Facebook page, we're gonna have a list of pot sizes and how many plants you could actually put in each pot. I have seen them where they have taken a pot this size and they have put a bamboo stick in the middle put three pole beans around it, and then they made a circle of all these pots and had everything meet in the, in the center. It's great if you're renting and you're not allowed to dig in the garden. And if you do it that way too, then when it all fills in, the kids kind of have a tent that they can go into and read their books, hide from the sun, have a break. So anyway, there you are. Those are the container packs from Grow Local this year. Thanks. Hi, it's Candace with Grow Local, and if this year you picked up your in-ground container packs, what you should have are a couple of tomato seedlings, a couple of kale, maybe some onions, and you will have a bunch of seeds. You might have, this is a sample bag, not all of them are, will have been the same, but you will have bush beans, lettuce, carrots, I just dropped the cucumber, squash, parsnips, and you will also have um, a load of compost from earth land, and, earth, land, and sea. You should have a couple buckets of it, um, which is absolutely beautiful stuff for growing in, you guys. I've had success with it for several years now, so I won't be saying anything nasty about them. If you don't have it, just make sure that your garden soil is good for vegetables. If it's really, really full of clay, you might want to amend it. We will go into more detail on that another day. Um, but for now, what you just want to make sure is that you've got nice, loose soil. If it's got lots of clay in it, that's absolutely fine. That stuff retains nutrients like crazy, and it's good for growing in. If you'll notice here, I have a couple rows of carrots that I did already. Carrots are notorious for drying out. They're a little teeny tiny seed. They love to be close to the surface, but you've got to keep them damp all the time. 
One trick that I have heard of and seen people have a lot of success with it is they sow the seeds and then they water them in and then they put a board on top and the board stops the moisture from leaving as quickly and you just keep picking that board up every day and after a couple of weeks all of a sudden you're going to see little green things starting to come up then get rid of the board and they will grow just beautifully for you. Um, once they, you can sow them every couple of weeks too. If you're real big carrot eaters, you can do a couple rows, maybe three or four weeks later, do another couple rows and then you will always have them at the right size when you're ready to eat. If you're gonna plant squash, I usually do it at the front because it trails over and that's when I do the patty pan. Patty pan are my favorite. They're not a huge plant. They're really good for in containers. So if you're stuck for room, you can do that too. But the plant typically only gets about that big around and maybe that long. So I plant mine and you can see I've done three here. And they will grow up and they will get lots of sunshine and they'll give me lots of wonderful little squash. But they're not going to block the sun and they're not going to impede the people that walk down my sidewalk. On this end, I get most of the sun, so this is typically where I grow my herbs. And I will put tomato plants and peppers down at this end too. And if you can see my big old sticks, I'm going to be putting wire. And I'll run the wire from here over to the other bed. And in front of that, that's where I'm going to be growing my peas and they grow up. You could do that with your cucumbers. You can do that if you've got the zucchini squash the regular long green ones. They are really good for trellising. Keeps the bugs away for the most part. It's clean and you get more bang for your buck because you still got lots more space for growing. And like I said, I'm gonna be having tomatoes and peppers and what will look like way too much basil but is never enough in this bed. So on that note, it's easy peasy. Just think what you wanna eat the most of. Think, think about when you want to eat it and not run out. And think about how the sun is going to hit and where you're going to walk. And you're good to go. Hi, it's Candace from Grow Local and I just thought I'd show you just a couple of books here. We talked about pumpkins with the kids and there is an absolutely brilliant book called The Story of the Pumpkin Circle. It's the story of a garden. It's the pumpkin circle. And it has, for younger kids, it has some absolutely wonderful pictures in it. It's a very easy read. It's very informative. Um, you just won't get tired of it. And it shows you some things to do. And I have found kids really enjoy this book. That's one of the ones that they'll go back to and they'll thumb through it over and over and over again, okay? There is another one if the kids are a little bit bigger and it's called Big City Bees. And it goes through where the bees live and where they find food and how these kids relate to them as they go through the city. Their grandpa gardens, there's a rooftop garden for a restaurant, there's a guy with bees. So it is, it's a little more reading but it is good, it is interesting, and it shows you that you can garden all over the place. You don't need to have a huge backyard and you don't even need to live in the country. This is another book. She actually, this woman, her name is Sharon Lovejoy. She lives in California, so not everything is quite pertinent to where we are. Some of the insects and stuff might be confusing, but still, it's an educational. And she goes through these books really, really well. There's all sorts of things, how to grow a pumpkin garden, how to do the three sisters garden, growing potatoes in tubs. This one's on pod furniture. Um, there's your tub of spuds. Getting ready and how to care for your garden. All sorts of short things, but really good to know, can take it with you for your life kind of um, information and projects. And it's really, it's one of my favorites. She's got two others that go more with the, uh, the stories and the projects that you can do with the kids. And for adults, or young adults, this is called Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. I love her. It's like reading poetry. 
She is so brilliant. You just want to get your fingers in the soil and you understand how these things work together really, really well. It's indigenous wisdom, scientific knowledge and the teaching of plants. Um, when she talks, she paints pictures. You can, you can feel it. You just want to get outside and, and explore. Um, and if you can look at all the little paper clips I've got in here, those are all things that I just keep going back to because I really, I found them interesting. I, they're tidbits that I love sharing with kids. So an easy read, but highly educational. And I think you'd really enjoy it. The other one I have is Elliot Coleman's new organic grower. This is probably more for people that are growing bigger gardens, um, slightly larger scale, but it worked for me and it's got all sorts of information in it that you'll find really, really helpful and viable and it's organic so you learn that the less expensive ways of doing things. I'm showing you this book because I used to have his The Four Season Harvest, which was my all-time favorite of his, but I lent it out and it hasn't returned yet. And it's been a couple years now, so I think I have to buy it again. But he is absolutely brilliant. He's very well known in his field. And he can get very, very technical. Some of you will like it. Some of you will skip those pages and just go to the ones that you want to see.